What is calculus? Calculus is the study of small changes. In everyday life and in fields such as physics, mathematics, chemistry, and economics, we encounter countless situations where we must analyze instantaneous changes. For example, consider instantaneous speed, Newton's law of gravitation, Kepler's second law, law of areas, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, heat flow, population growth. Calculus gives us the glasses to see, the insight to understand, and the scale to quantify those small changes. Because if we understand a process over its smallest scale, we can predict it over large scale or over longer time spans by extrapolation or integration, which shall be discussed in a later video. Calculus has two main branches. 1. Differential calculus, focused on finding instantaneous rates of change, the derivative. 2. Integral calculus, focused on summing up small changes over time, the integral. Today we'll dive into differential calculus. But before exploring derivatives in depth, let's begin with a fundamental concept drawn from trigonometry, slopes and tangents. What is slope? Simply speaking, it is rise over run. Imagine trekking through a jungle and coming across a mountain. You can't just go straight, you must climb. Slope or steepness is a measure of how high a mountain is versus its length. The greater the slope, the greater the steepness, the greater the effort required to climb the mountain. Now, if we change our view from mountains to triangles and trigonometry here, triangle slope is basically perpendicular divided by base. But why this quantity matters, and more importantly, what does it have to do with differential calculus? Before going further, hit like, subscribe, and share with friends. Slopes are basically rise over run, so if we know the slope of a mountain, we can know its height without actually having to climb it. Similarly, in a right triangle, knowing the slope helps us determine how high is the perpendicular relative to its base. For a linear function like y equals mx plus c, y is directly proportional to x where x is the base and y the perpendicular to For a small change in x, y will increase by slope times x amount. So slope is the rate of change of y with respect to x or simply dy by dx. So if we know the rate of change of y with respect to x, we can know the value of y for any value of x at any instant along the triangle. Now you might ask what has differential calculus to do with all this? For that we go back to the definition of calculus, which is the study of small changes. So, if we know the rate of change of a parameter, slope, we can essentially understand the behavior of the whole span of the function at all points. Consider, for example, this triangle. We can very easily see its slope is measurable. Just simply divide rise over run, and we get the slope. Even its smallest component can be easily explained by its slope. Now let's draw an arc and find the slope of the tangent to that arc. As the tangent moves along the arc, slope changes means to say x does not linearly increase y instead for every change in x, y increases by a different amount. This is due to the curvature of arc. This is a common theme in nature. Rarely are natural laws linear. Mostly follow some form of curvature. Differential calculus breaks down those curves to infinitesimally minute chunks and helps us find the instantaneous change rate at the near micro level. Because at the micro level things become flat and lose curvature, so to speak, any approximation of the slope at that level retains its behavior at the macro level too. Consider for example this parabola y equals x squared. We find slopes at points on x axis separated by 0.1 units. As you can see the slopes at such short distance apart are different as well and not constant. So we cannot get a definitive value of y for a small change in x? No we can. We just have to dig deeper and really zoom in to smallest possible instantaneous level. This will give us actual instantaneous change rate of the function, aka derivative or differential, and it will remain constant throughout the span of the function. This is the crux of differential calculus. This is what we do in differential calculus. We find smallest possible change rates. Not zero, but smallest possible. For our parabola example, here is the graph of the function showing its slope. As you can see, the value of slope changes linearly as the value of x changes. 
Consider, for example, an algebraic polynomial function. On the right-hand side is the graph of its slope, which is itself represented by a function, 3x squared plus 4x plus 1. As the value of x changes, the value of the slope, right-hand side, also changes. Note that in this case, the value of slope does not change linearly, but also changes as a curve. So could there be derivatives of derivatives or slopes of slopes? More on that in future videos. Consider another example, a graph of y equals sine of x. The function is one of the most, if not the most important wave functions in trigonometry. Now, as the function changes, its slope also changes. Its slope in this case is not linear or ever increasing, as was the case in our previous examples, but it is offset by 90 degrees from its parent functions. That is slope of sine of x is equal to cosine of x for any value of x. Sine and cosine functions are offset from each other by 90 degrees. I hope you enjoyed this video and understood the basics of differential calculus. Next, we will see how to find the derivatives using the first principle. Hit like and comment your thoughts and questions for without your support, there is no spaceonomy.